as you can see, I'm sitting here chilling in my backyard. It's a nice, lovely day. And um, I figured, what better day to launch my new YouTube channel, Bless the Best. We're going to be discussing different things, you know what I mean? I come from a background of music, different things. But, you know, I'm just a regular dude. Got a lot of life experience, and, you know. I understand things a lot better than I did in my younger days. But I can still relate to younger things as well as more mature things. As you'll see as we walk through our journey through this. Okay. You know, I spend, I wouldn't say a lot of time, but pretty good amount of time, you know, when I'm bored, sitting around, not doing nothing. And, you know, I sit there, and I scroll on my YouTube feed, you know, I got different things, subscribe to different channels, all kinds of stuff. So, today, I'm scrolling, and I really don't know, I really have no idea how this got past me, but it did. Okay, let me give you a little backstory. All right, maybe I'll say two or three years ago, um, I discovered this, this channel called Sonetta TV out of New York. And and what they do in there, they it's it's like a it's the conscious community, so they discuss a lot of history and they have debates and and different people from each one of the six or groups, you know, like you got like Hebrew Israelites, you got your Kemites, you got your Moors, you got all this and they come together on this channel. And Sarnetta, they say he like the Don King of the conscious community because he knows everybody and he gets them to come to his platform. And you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of bullshit sometimes, but I learned a lot of things and it opened my eyes. And you know, I was a frequent watcher. So back to Young Pharaoh. So they used to have like these like these street debates. Where they just out on the block getting it in. So um, I was watching one of these street debates and I noticed this dude that I never saw on there before and he was a little younger than the rest of them. But boy, he out there digging in their ass. He about there digging in their ass. I could tell like it was a, it was a different kind of fire in this dude. So quite naturally, he became a regular, and and one of my favorite people ever. And the fact that he was, and the fact that he was so young, was was a big part of it. So as time progressed, he become like unbeatable in these debates and all this what they have. So um. His star power caught on, and he became too big for the channel, and he went off on his own, and he started his own channel, right? So he used to make these little videos, you know what I mean? He ain't have no background or nothing, you know, he was just starting, I was making it, but he would say some of the most logical things, like, like, yeah, 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 that make a lot of sense, young fella. I'm like, you know, he gonna be good because because like the young ones, you know, late teens through early 20s, he was right there with them. So he was a real good person to bring that message. And his message was good. Okay. It was blackest, the blackest black abyss can get. He was uncompromising. And he would come with... um. He would come with facts and science. He like he like 
you know, you met these dudes in school, just just a little smart dude, but but you know, he ain't gonna let nobody control him. He probably stay in trouble. He was one of these dudes, but he he had found his thing, te teaching teaching that that black history and what's going on with white supremacy. He was real good at it. So boom. I would I would turn different up people on to him, you know what I mean, that I know. Some of them be like, oh man, this motherfucker, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I would defend him, no man, you know, you gotta check it out, you gotta check it out. So boom. Alright. Now fast forward to last summer. Alright. Last summer. That's the summer of twenty twenty. What happened in the summer of 2020? You had, you had the George Floyd. No, let me back up. First summer, of, first summer of 2020 was marked by the COVID pandemic. And then you had the George Floyd killing. You had the Ahmaud Arbery killing and all that. So that that was up in the air. Then at the same time, on a lesser note. Last summer was Dante Wilder against Tyson Fury's fight. One of the most anticipated fights in a while because you had because you had the big black country knockout artist against the big European white boy great white hope. You know, that's always a great fight. When you got a black strong black fighter and you got a great white hope right so boom I have a fight party at my house right I'm ready he come out and look like a fucking black panther suit you know what I mean looking all proud you know what I mean um, 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 talking talking that Hebrew Israelite thing you know what I mean really really making me proud right and he go out there and get destroyed. By the end of the second round, this man had blood running out of his ear. I've never seen that before in a boxing match. It looked like, okay, you ever seen like a like a like a three on one fight where three dudes that can fight jump on one dude? The fight might not last. Get back, Shug. Get back, Shug. It's my dog. He 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 want to be a star too. But yeah, he made me lose my damn train of thought. But yeah, he looked like he had got got beat up by three dudes in the second round, leaking everywhere. Long story short, he get knocked out, and I'm looking like, fuck, man, how the fuck? Does that happen? You know what I mean? I understand that people can lose in boxing, but before the fight was over with, Dante Wilder was shrinking back from the punches, you know, in a way that a boxer don't do. You know what I mean? You you, you can knock the shit out of them, but they're not afraid to get hit because they used to get hit, and I noticed that, right? So, I'm like, damn, one, you know, it, that was just odd. So, like the next week, young Pharaoh noticed noticed some things looking at the fight. He noticed that Tyson Fury left glove would flap when he punched. Like 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 if he throwing a hook like this, you know what I mean? This your fist right here. His glove was back here. And um come to find out, he didn't tape the clip tape the glove to his wrist tight so he would slide his fist back in the glove and actually punch it with the wrist part the part of the glove that don't have no pad and Pharaoh broke that shit down comprehensively day by day by day until it was no doubt that Tyson Fury cheated okay keep in mind all he did was history videos and you know I mean basically talking about life blackness and stuff like that but he got sidetracked on this um Dante Wilder thing because he, he truly cared about it you, 
You, it came through on the screen. Okay. He went viral talking about that. So, and these boxing channels, they got they got these big internet boxing channels, and they picked up the story. ESPN and all of them, you know, they never they never picked up the story, but but the big boxing channels picked it up. And they use Pharaoh's breakdowns on their channels. So that brought Pharaoh a stream of new followers. Okay. For the first time, he had black and white followers. So so he so he stayed riding the wave. And then I started noticing little chinks in the armor just little things that he used to say and i'd be like wait a minute this can't be the same too you know what i mean i'm like damn you know but what it was he got a taste of them white followers and them big numbers and he compromised his message because he prioritized his new followers over the old Man, he's he's saying all kind of crazy stuff. So, um, you know, okay, young Pharaoh, he, he is a fighter, uh, uh, like a MMA fighter, right? And he goes and he trains with these white people. And one morning, I'm watching his live stream, and he was talking about he went to the gym, you know, me these white guys trained or whatever, and uh, he had a cup, a cup that said U.S. Army. And he was like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, this I talk. He was like, yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I went to the gym with these white guys, you know what I mean? And the white guy gave me this cup. And this is my cup. And I'm going to drink it. I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to drink out of this cup because he gave it to me. And that's my guy. So, you know, all kind of corny shit, right? So, um, so, um, I went on, I went on his Facebook page, you know what I mean? And the comments were like, hey, Pharaoh, um, What's going on with you, man? You 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 getting you getting you just start kind of compromising in your message. So he would never respond. Why should he? Who the fuck am I? You know what I mean? But his fans and followers would would respond and try to defend him. And you know, what I mean, I would just chop him right up, right quick with logic, because I wasn't doing up but telling the truth anyway. So. Right then, I stopped following him and I stopped watching his videos because I saw where it was going. So, boom, CPAC, CPAC come around right before the um, election. He done went so far, he done went so far to compromise his message. Overnight, he flipped and went QAnon and started supporting Donald Trump so heavily that between July and November, he went from the black woman is God, the white man has no soul, is is no help for him. He is the the infinite devil of the earth to supporting. Donald Trump running around with white people so much that they invited him to speak at CPAC. But you 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 know how white supremacists do. They did a little homework and found out who he really was, and you know what I mean. They exed him out of that. You know what I mean. But I was like, that was the last straw. Like, look, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So now, okay. If you ever heard anybody say that the black woman is God, like like within the last five years, thank young Pharaoh for that, ladies. He carried the ball on the black woman is God. That was his that was his motto. That was his motto. And you know what I mean? I agree with the concept, but I don't take take it literally. The black woman 
is the closest thing to God I know. That's all I want to be with. You know what I mean? I couldn't even imagine nothing else. But enough about that. So how that ties in is now. So he had this girl. I think he had two girls one time. But I know he had this one, this one chick. That he was rocking with, you know what I mean? They were supposed to be married or whatever, and they had a couple of kids, and her name was Miss Nature or something. You know, she went right along with the whole swag of Pharaoh. So I read this story today that he left her for the nanny, for a Puerto Rican nanny and left her in a hotel or something, allegedly. I don't know if it's true or not. I saw a lot of videos about it. And I actually saw him talking about um, the breakup. I don't know about the nanny part and all that. That's alleged. But you know what I mean? That's just that's just the bookend. That just goes to show you, like, look, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not no gullible dude. I'm not no gullible dude. I'm an older dude, and and I've been consciously aware of my surroundings as far as race, government, all that since since my late teens till now. I'm not no gullible dude. The purpose of this video is to show you an example of myself how easily you can get sucked in by somebody's words and 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 how long a person can hold a persona but if it's not them and it's really not true and they bullshit it's going to end up in the same way like young pharaoh all of the things that you said you will become a living lesson and a living contradiction. So, keep this in mind. Listen to these dudes on podcasts and stuff like that. Man, it's a lot of people got a lot of answers. They got a lot of wisdom. You know what I mean? It, it can get you through something. It can spark a train of thought in you and push you in a certain direction. But, Take the good and the practical that you can apply to your life and leave them fucking personalities alone. The personality is what draw you in. That's the same thing that drew in um, the Trump fans and all this, man. Be your own man. Independent thinker. Stay up. And stay tuned for more. This blessed the best, and I'm out.